license will change things, don't you? Yes, ma'am, I understand. I want to make absolutely sure that you understand what will happen here about what you're telling me. I understand, ma'am. I understand that you've grown rather fond of Mr. Patterson, but it's my duty to make sure you're not doing this to protect your friend. Ma'am, I can assure you, I know what this looks like, but I'm not doing this for him. I'm doing this for me. Okay, then. As you probably already know, there will be an investigation. Depending on the findings of that, your sentence may be adjusted <coughs> accordingly. Uh, what about T? Well, that also depends on the findings of the investigation. Once again, his fate is in your hands. Let's hope this time you're telling the truth. since you got out of here. You were completely distracted. I mean, look, it's fine. You don't have to tell me anything. You know how fast word travels around here. Yeah, I know how fast word travels around here. You want to know what happened? No, not really. What do you mean, not really? <laughs> I don't know. I think I, I have an idea. I just wanted to hear you say it. You are a hard guy to like. You know that? Yes, I do. Yeah, well, what else do you know? Well, I didn't know at first, you know, but as you know, in here there's a lot of time to think, right? It's been bugging me. I didn't know why you requested to be put in isolation. I couldn't figure it out. And then I was thinking back to when you first got in here, and T was telling you his story, right? And, and you did not like the part when he said that the kid who called the cops was scared. And he took off. You hid yourself for a while. We didn't see you. All right? Ryan got out. You kind of, you took T under your wing. And uh, everything seemed fine, and right up until uh, <clears throat> right up until Ryan died, and then uh, you know, then I, it just seemed like you had the stuff inside you had to come out. That's so what I was guessing. Maybe you confessed. 
I mean, shit, yeah, man, I confessed, and I mean, I didn't mean it for things to go down the way they did. I mean, I was young, younger, you know, I mean, we were just having fun, man. I just, I, I was so scared about what my parents think of me stealing liquor from the bar and taking my girlfriend skinny dipping. I mean, man, this girl was so hot. She would do anything I asked her to. We're like, okay, whatever. Look, we were just having fun, you know, and, and then T showed up, and everybody knew he was a retard. I mean, I didn't think he would go to prison. I just thought that maybe he would have to pick up trash on the highway or something. Uh, you, you got him convicted of raping an unconscious underage girl. You, that's not a picking up trash on the side of the highway kind of crime. I know. Like I said before, I was young and stupid, you know? And now I, I'm facing life for putting T in here. It's just... What else does it get me besides more time? Yeah, so the end of your sentence, whatever, it doesn't change anything. Look, I was already facing life. Now I have no chance of getting out of here. Yeah, well, you know, there's always a uh, time served. What, like they'll reduce my sentence for time already served? Sounds about right, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, well, you combine that with good behavior and you never know. I don't see it happening, man. Look, I, I know you're not going to want to hear me say this. <laughs> don't say it then. <laughs> you know I'm going to. I know. There's just something about that term. What term? Time served. I mean, it, mean, it means something else. Like what? What? Think about it. You, you're getting credit for something you already did. I mean, you know you got more to do, you know you got more to learn, but, but everything that you had to go through from then to now, it means something. <clears throat> so I should be happy that I've been sitting here for the past five and a half years? In a way, yes. It's going to take some time to see things that way, man. <laughs> yeah.
I was a sophomore, he was a junior. Ever the hopeless romantic. He used to like to surprise me by showing up places with stuffed animals or flowers. Back then I thought it was cute. Now I realize he was just making sure there was nobody else. I remember this one time, right before graduation. I'd been really stressed out and spending a lot of time at the library. I came home late one night and I found my apartment lit up with red and blue lights. I found an officer to talk to. As it turns out, he thought it'd be a good idea to try to surprise me by breaking into my apartment. He managed to pry open my kitchen window and as he was climbing through, he got his pants caught on something and he ended up breaking the window frame, which sent the window down and trapping him. He yelled for help and the neighbors, not knowing what was going on, called the police. We laughed about that for many years. <coughs> so, what happened? I don't know, really. I took the exam for, to be a police officer and was put on the waiting list. Two years later, I became a police officer and he got a job at his father's law firm. It was just like we planned. Although I don't think either one of us anticipated the amount of time we would spend apart. It was good for a while. We didn't see each other much, but it was okay. Not exactly sure what changed in him, but eventually it just seemed like no matter what I did, was, wasn't good enough. I used to hate it when he would leave the house. It seems so lonely. Now, I can't wait for him to go. It's the only time I can relax. Ma'am, with all due respect, you need to get out. Have you thought of filing for a divorce? Of course I have. More times than I can count. But how do you divorce a divorce attorney? He's got an impeccable reputation, and everybody in town adores him. Nobody would believe me if I told him what he was like at home. There's no way they take my word over his. <clears throat> they don't have to. It doesn't matter what they think. You need to take care of yourself. I know, but I don't have any place to go. And without him, I really don't have any money. He knows that. You could stay with us for a while until you got back on your feet. That's why we need your help. 
Look, you and I both know what happens to rats in here. I can keep you safe, but only if you tell us what happened. Just like you kept him safe? No thanks. I'm better off taking my own chances. Thank you. Look. Paul was a special inmate. He helped people. I know he helped you, and he helped me too. You told your problems to an inmate? He listened to me too. Am I losing my mind? You, you told your problems to an inmate and why the hell are you telling me? Because we trust you to do the right thing. What you did for Theodore took courage. But you have one more job left to do. <clears throat> <coughs> We're trusting you to tell us what happened. Trust us to keep you safe. Tell us what happened. Look, the Aryans were all over T. And you know how it is in here. Nobody likes a sex offender. Victor and Slim were all over him. <coughs> they were they were mad because life or er, Paul was protecting T. What do you mean protecting him? Well, Paul told Victor that he would take the fall for T. He just had to promise that when it was all over that they would let T be. But Theodore was released. This isn't your fault. Look, if I hadn't have fingered T, Paul would have never had to protect him, and T would have never wound up in here. Look, this is there's no way this is not my fault. So why didn't they just drop the whole thing when Theodore was released? Because a debt needed to be paid. Will the rent and utilities be? 
Oh yes, the, the rent is $9.75 a month and the utilities average about $90. But the rent's paid up for the first six months. But there must be some mistake. I haven't paid you anything yet. Oh, I know that. Uh, Paul had me contact the electric company to get the average and he's been sending me money for quite a while. Uh, you're all set. You can move in as soon as you need to. What are you reading? But this, uh, this is the Bible. It uh, gives me some things to think about. Like what? All kinds of things, I guess. I'm not much of a Bible reader. What's it about? Well, there's a certain verse I came across that's underlined. It's uh, Matthew 10, 39. It reads that if you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. It, uh, it sort of speaks to me. Speaks to me. Why? It reminds me of someone. I might regret asking this, but the money that Paul used for this place, I mean, being the warden of a prison? Who does it remind you of? Ma'am, I can assure you, everything's on the up and up. For as long as I knew the man, he was always helping people out. <laughs> made a mistake. And that mistake, it landed him in prison for what turned out to be the rest of his life. But the Paul I knew, the real Paul, he was a good man. So, what are you in for? Life. 